Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. Today, I'm doing another video around card investing, and this time I want to focus on those folks that maybe don't have thousands of dollars to invest, uh, but do want to get into card investing, but would like to do it at a lower cost and to kind of get that thrill of doing a card flip. So this would be more for your beginners, but I feel like this is a trick that any sort of card flipper actually could use and take value away from. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to say, um, if you have a $100 budget and you want to flip cards, how would you go about doing that? And, ha and how much money uh, could you actually turn in flipping $100 worth of cards? So I started thinking about it and I came up with one trick that I think would work for a lot of different cards. However, I think for this card in particular, it would work really well. Now, what card am I talking about? The card I am going to reference today is the 2018 Topps Heritage High Number Ronald Acuna Jr. Rookie Card. Now, this one is a PSA 9. We'll get into the PSA 9 and what this card is worth at all its different levels from ungraded to 10 to 9 and how you can get into flipping this card at a fairly a, at a relatively cheap cost and then actually turning quite a sizable profit on your investment. So without further ado, let's get into the numbers to show you what this trick is and to show you how you could flip this card, the Ronald Acuña Jr. Tops Heritage for a substantial profit in a fairly short amount of time. Okay, so here's what we are looking at on screen right now. What we're looking at is a chart that shows the last 20 sales on eBay. Now, this is as of June 23rd. This video went live on June 24th. But what you're looking at is the last 20 sales of the Ronald Acuna Jr. 2018 Tops Heritage High Number Card Number 580 in the condition of it being ungraded. So this is an ungraded raw card. And what you can see is the average selling price is $12.55. However, with that being said, this has sold for numerous times um, in the last 20 sales or below 10 or at 10. We've, I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, with six different sales. And you can also see that we have a trend line that says this card in the last 20 sales has actually gone down in value a little bit. Now, its latest sale took it right back up to $13.00. But with an average selling price of about $12.55, that's what the average cost of a raw Ronald Acuna Jr. 2018 Topps Heritage uh, high number card is going for. So let's now flip that and let's take a look at the PSA 9, which is the one I showed earlier in this video. Now what you'll see here is same exact card, but the average selling price goes up by around $11. So that card, its average selling price in the last 20 sales is $21.41. And you can see its trend line equals that a little bit, not really up, not really down, down just slightly, but basically it is hovering right around that $22 range, $21 to $22 range. And um, that's last couple sales spiked up a little bit. However, I would follow that trend line. But now let's take a look at the PSA 10 which shows a much different story. So the average, same exact card, but the average selling price all of a sudden bumps all the way up to $67 in its last 20 sales. And as we look at the trend line, the trend line is also going up. So you can see about 20 sales ago, you were kind of in the low 60s and it just went above 70 in its last sales. So the card is actually increasing in value as of late. However, all things considered, pretty steady, kind of hovering right around what we'll call a 67 to $70 range. So what does this all mean? And if you had a $100 budget, 
What could you do here to turn a fairly quick, fairly sizable profit? Well, the first thing you got to do is look at all of these three combined. So here's the comparison on this. You can see on the chart that we've got a trend line on the ungraded going down, kind of an even trend line on the PSA 9, and then a, an increasing trend line on the PSA 10. Now, here's the price difference from ungraded to PSA 9. It is $8.86 on the average sales of the last 20 sales. And then um, on the ungraded card all the way up to the PSA 10, it is a $54.45 uh, difference. So that is a very sizable difference. And that is where our opportunity on this card is going to lie. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here's how I would recommend flipping the 2018 Topps Heritage High Number Ronald Acuna Jr. on a $100 budget. First of all, step one, you're going to want to purchase not one, not two, not three, but four ungraded Topps 2018 Heritage High Number Ronald Acuna Jr. Now, as you do that, obviously what you're going to want to do here is inspect the card condition extremely well. Make sure that this is a gradable card. Do not just buy it by simply peru uh, simply looking at the picture on eBay. You definitely want to zoom in on that thing. You want to make sure you buy one that you can see the front, you can see the back, you can tell the centering, you can do all of that. You want to make sure that this card very, at the very least is going to grade out at a nine. And what you're hoping for is a 10. Uh, the target price that I would target is $12 or lower. As you saw on the first chart, you can get this card for below $10. However, a fair price, which is a little bit below market value, which was $12.55, I think $12 is a good target price. Um, but I think you could even do better than that if you're looking and buying at the right time of the day. So the total, if you do that, if you if you if you buy four of these that you think you can get graded, the total it's going to cost you is forty eight dollars. So then, obviously, step number two: submit the cards to PSA uh, grading via a bulk grading service. Do not submit them on your own. Get part of a group uh, bulk grading service. It, it will take you a little bit longer to get the card back. However, it costs you a lot less to grade the card. Even with PSA's new grading uh, pricing, which newer cards obviously are going to cost you a little bit more. That cost is going to be $52. It's $13 per card. So if we had 52 plus 48, that gets us to our $100 budget. So then step three is you get the graded cards back and then assess what your next steps are going to be because you never know what grades you're going to get. Um, however, if you have done your due diligence on looking at the cards um, and maybe getting them at a card shop versus like eBay or something like that and making a deal um, or getting them through other people in the card community that kind of know what to look for in regards to grading, um, when you get the when you get the graded cards back, you're going to want to assess your next step. Um, your next step should very much be if you get any tens, flip them immediately. Uh, my target price on these would be seventy dollars or more per card. So if I'm putting these on eBay, I'm gonna. Eat, I'm probably not going to auction them. I'm probably going to put them at a $69.99 buy it now price. But if you wanted to auction it, you could. Um, some of the auction prices go for a little bit higher. If you if you do them in a lot, it uh, is a lot of like two or three or even all four of them is a lot. They actually do tend to go for more than singles, which I found interesting when I looked at all of the data. By the way, I pull all the data from TerraSpeak, which is a data research tool that you can buy out of eBay. But what do you do if you get the nines? Uh, my recommendation with the nine is you hold on the nines and then you wait for Acuna to see a price spike or think longer term for future value. So Ronald Acuna Jr., look, the cards are going to stay about even right now. He had a spike late last year, but the, uh, until the games start, I don't think you're going to see his cards go up or down too much. Uh, but once the games start, if he starts off fast, Keep in mind, Acuna was the hottest thing in the hobby just a few months ago, and those cards have the ability to skyrocket even more if he shows up again doing what he is capable of doing. 
Um, and even if he starts off a little bit slow in a COVID year, um, I think this year is just going to be a little bit odd, but you might want to think a little bit more long term on these, maybe two years, three years, hold them. But then what do you do if you get something that is lower than a nine? If it's uh, if you get an eight or you get something lower, here's what you've done. You've basically got yourself a Ronald Acuna rookie card it, uh, for your PC collection in a slab which all things considered is not bad. Um, so here's the different profit scenarios that you could come up with here. Your best case scenario is all four cards grayed out at a PSA 10. And your initial investment goes from $180 all the way up to 280 or more if you decide to auction those. Again, I, I'm basing that off a $70 um, a $70 selling price. I do think that you can get more than $70 for that card in a PSA 10. So you could easily trip, uh, triple your investment here on a best case scenario. But let's be honest, let's do a more realistic scenario, which will be um, two cards come back as a PSA 10 uh, and two cards come back as a nine. Here's what that scenario looks like. Your initial investment of $100 becomes $140. So you're still on the plus, and then you are still holding two PSA 9 Ronald Acuna Jr. rookie cards, which you could flip at a later date for additional profit. So say Ronald Acuna cards do spike, and let's say all of a sudden the 9, which is currently hovering around 21, goes up to like 30 or a $35 or maybe even more. Maybe you get lucky and it goes all the way up to 40 or, or something more than that. But let's assume it goes up to 30. Well, you could flip them at that time, and if you flip two of them, your $100 investment now becomes a $200 dollar um, profit so you have doubled even on a realistic scenario which um, basically just requires you to be give that card an honest assessment before you send it in for grading but what about your worst case scenario which is all the cards come back and they are PSA 8 or less one next time you send in for grading be a little bit more honest about what you think that card could grade out at um, but let's take a look at the worst case scenario your initial investment of a hundred dollars is now worth around sixty dollars because when you look at the psa eights they are worth roughly about uh, what an ungraded card goes for which is like twelve dollars so you times that by six your initial investment is now worth about sixty dollars and you were down forty dollars basically because of the grading cost so you're you're still even on all of your cards what you do there is you hold all the cards for future uh, for future value and wait for future spikes in the acuna uh, cards to make up the difference uh, so you would still be holding for call them psa eights um in your collection and if those things start to go up what you do is you wait for the psa 8 to sell somewhere between 20 and 25 dollars and you can make your money back or you very much say hey look it's a ronald acuna jr rookie card and i'm going to keep it in my pc so there's some additional thoughts i have here before we wrap all this up first of all Ronald Acuna Jr., I don't think I need to tell this to most people, but he is one of the safest bets in the baseball collecting hobby. He's a proven star. He's on a young, talented team that made the playoffs last year. He is the cornerstone. He is the face of the franchise. And that uh, and that organization, the Braves, should very much be a decent, if not great, organization for a few years to come. So that star power is going to be there. And then when we look at his stats in his er, in the early part of his career, the trajectory he is on right now gives him a very high potential for a Hall of Fame consideration. As soon as that stop, as soon as that talk really starts heating up, Ronald Acuna Jr.'s cards are going to heat up as well. So a short-term investment, if you get tens on these, you can flip these things really fast. The, the, ungraded, the raw are still cheap, and the graded ones are going for a, different, a, a decent price. But assuming you get a 9 or an 8, if you hold on these for a little bit, Acuna's tra the trajectory overall still very good. So definitely a card that even if it comes back in, a, as an 8, maybe in the short term you've lost a little money, but I think in the long run you've still got a little bit of uh, chance for profit there. Then the other thing, um, as we think about this little trick, which is 
what what why is the tops heritage Ronald Acuna Jr. rookie card worth so much less than the flagship? Um a lot of people know the reasoning behind that, but basically most of your casual collectors are looking for the flagship product that, and some of them don't even know there's a lot of the other products that are out there. However, grading your non-flagship rookie cards of young rising stars, especially if you can get it like a parallel. Um, so, so like for example, in our Ronald Acuna Jr. example, if you have the purple refractor parallel of this, that card goes from being around worth around seventy dollars in a PSA ten all the way up to like three hundred. So, if you can get some of these raw cards and get them graded and get the high grade on them, um, in the non-flagship version of their rookie card, so something more like Topps Finest, Topps Heritage. Um, along those lines, then there is still a lot of profit that can be made on those cards. It's a very profitable uh, medium to long-term investment um, and even short-term if you're getting tens. Then in conclusion, this only works if you're grading with PSA. PSA is still the standard for grading when it comes to card flipping. I know a lot, I hear a lot of people on a lot of different streams talk about Beckett grading services, uh, GMA, all, all, all the other ones that you can do. However, uh, when it comes to card value, I get that you can get ones faster somewhere else. Um, I, th I know some people say within a seven day turnaround, but what you only are going to get from PSA is that premium price for getting a PSA 10, because that is still the gold standard for grading, whether that's fair or not is debatable. And that's for another video. So you guys, that is my trick. Please be sure to throw over to first Hit that like button if you like this card collecting series. Let me know if you think that this is sound advice or that you think uh, that this is maybe a little more risky than I think it is. I believe that this is a low risk investment option based upon who the player is and what the card is. Um, but let me know in the comments below what you think. And then... Um, if you are not subscribed to the channel, now is the time to do so. We are doing more card investing uh, videos every day. Uh, well, not every day. We, we do them every week. However, we're doing more and more of them. Um, we do breaks. We do all sorts of different things. Card investment advice, um, breaks, all sorts of uh, fun things, one cent cards. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe now and hit that bell so you can be the uh, first to get the latest card investment advice from one cent sports cards. In the meantime, I hope you guys are having great luck on your personal pack rips. Until next time, good luck on your investments. And we'll see you again soon. Take care.